The Ramones, Bobby Talking Heads, Yankees, Mets, Giants, Jets, L I E G W B, F T R and the B Q E, Bus Stops, Taxi Drivers, Walk Ups and High Rises, Liquor Street and Mulberry, and Staten Island Ferry, Rikers Island, Wall Street, Moma Lady Liberty, Pops. Welcome to the Vinnie Vela Show. Yeah. Uh, tonight. Yeah. There you go. Tonight we have a hell of a show. <laughs> I have, um, you know, normally I start off with a topic, but you want to know something? I'm going to leave that alone tonight because I want to give the whole half hour to, to our um, guest. my guests. And one of my guests is uh, Love. She was on Mob Housewives. Mob. Yeah. Mob and Wives. I did it. What? Mob Wives. Mob Wives, whatever. VH1. I don't, I don't watch that show. <laughs> and, um, an identification. And I married a mobster and uh, deadly sins. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tony and on that Marie. And I was called the mother of all sins. How nice is that? That's Ooh. What they call that and Tony Marie, that I, uh, she's on, also on identification discovery also. Okay. And uh, she told me, the first thing she told me when she sat down is, you call me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I called her the last time, I said, do you know who, who this is? And what did you say? Vinny Vella. Yeah, but you said something about Oh, your my voice. Vo I, well, you she said, how did you right know? Away. I, oh, how could you not know there you that go. voice? Oh, well, there, there you go. Okay. It is very distinct. Okay. So now, please, oh, I, I want to know, know some more about, about you guys. I want to I know a lot more about you guys. Oh, my goodness. Love, don't give me that look. I'm not asking <laughs> that kind of a question. Yeah, love. Oh, you're up. Boy. <laughs> well, first of all, you were engaged six times. I didn't know that was going to be the first thing they said. <laughs> But yes, it's unbelievable I was engaged six times, yes. I mean, of course they would propose, many men would propose, but six times, that is pretty remarkable. Mm -hmm. And you never got married? No. I, well, my mother nicknamed me the runaway bride. Like, everybody thinks that it was my friends or the people in the street. My mother named me that. My mother actually said, if is you that do your this real name, one love? more time. Yeah. I love you. My mother named me that. That's your first name, yeah. naturally. Yeah. Okay. Yes. But my mother said, if you do this to us one more time, yeah. like, last engagement party I had, I was an hour and a half late, and my oh mother my picked up her things and was leaving. And everyone said, but her mother's leaving. And my mother said, oh, we're just, no way. My mother said, right. you got to be kidding me. You're all still sitting here. My mother goes, she had never even asked for gifts at this point. Wow. That's but I didn't last time. I didn't get gifts that instead. Name, I got donations Somebody wants to, like, to spend some time with us. I want to love you or something. How do you, how do you, I don't even want to get into that. Love, that's a nice name. I should have that. That should have been my name, Love, because I like to love, you know? Of course you do. You, oh, you love everyone. You're a very lovable guy. That's right, yeah. baby. Yeah. There you go. Well, who, who doesn't like to love? Love is the well, basis of all things. That is a life. gorgeous name. You're right. It really that's, is. That's really great. Is love. And that, that was my mother's intent when my mother named me. She said that, uh, you know, when she married my father, she was young. He was her first true love. Oh. And uh, she felt that, that when she, he, taking a man's last name, he gives you his family name, that's the truest form of love. She said, until oh, she so gave sweet. birth to me, when she looked at my face, she said I had his face and her face together. Oh. And she said, this is what love and really is to love. create oh, another life. Oh, my gosh. See that? That's going to be your new name. I'm going to call you <laughs> love from now on. <laughs> So I have wow, to work very hard to overcompensate for having such for a For having that name, I'm of just... course. <laughs> now, so I Tony... flip it around no, and make sure. evil. Yeah. How did you first get involved with the Mob Wives? Because you were in the third season, correct? Well, I grew up with the girls. We all grew up together. Oh, two of them were uh -huh. your friends, right? We, yeah. Well, no, actually, all of us oh, grew all up together, with the exception of Carla. Carla okay. was introduced by... Uh, but really by VH1. Well, she knew Renee, I guess, kind of, but she didn't grow up with us. She wasn't from Staten Island. But the I rest see. of us all grew up together. So um, we all kind of knew each other and grew up together. But I was in Miami, and I was working on a different project. Mm. I was actually working on two different TV shows. Oh, wow. When they were doing the first two seasons. So when you I came couldn't. back, I came back in time for the third season. And how is that experience like for you? Well, you know what? It, it, it was. It's a lot. It was a lot like being in high school. You know, oh, because they're your high school friends, and once you put your high school friends, and only now you're in reality TV, so everything is magnified and amplified of for course. the television. And then, of course, because it's reality, you have the producers nudging you to try to 
hype it up a little bit. So that makes, you know, uh, for the, yeah. the whole entire thing to just be, it's like high school on diesel fuel. You right. know, right. like, it's like the mean girls, Amina, mm -hmm. the click is clickier, the, you know, everything's just a little bit more intense. Were you, know? you satisfied okay. with how they portrayed you? Oh, absolutely show? not, absolutely not. But you know what, who's really satisfied with editing? The way I look well, at it is, true. I Absolutely. knew what I was getting into. I went into a reality show. I've done biog I've done biographies before. Mm -hmm. I've done documentaries, documentaries before. This was not a documentary. It was not a biography. It was a reality show. I want to know something about Tony Marie. I call her up a lot. <laughs> yes, you do. Oh. You finally got Aww. me here. <laughs> so, uh, I feel she's going to hang up on me one of these days. She must have, are you thinking I'm stalking you or something? No, I know you're No, not all right. You kind of like me a little bit. Yeah, right? I like you a little I bit. See, never, never, never. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit about your book. Okay. Scars of a Mob Life. Scars of a Real Mob Life. Of a Real Mob Life. Yes. yes. Um, hopefully, it's going to be coming out soon. I just finished it. Um, it took me about nine months to do. And uh, the you almost writer. finished with the book? No, the book is finished. Oh, the book is finished. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting for it to be released. Okay. Yes, I'm waiting for it to be released. Um, I had an amazing writer, that um, Tracy Bell, mm. um, that worked with me, and um, it's it's very interesting. And it's it's you know it's not another scars of a real mob wife. So mm -hmm. you think it's another mob book, but it actually isn't. The stuff is in there because that's who my family members were, right? And that's who I was married to. But it's mostly really more geared to women, uh, and to hear my side of the story. Actually, I never wanted my side of the story out until my ex-husband went to court, and he's the one who brought it, all my dirty laundry out right. of what he did to me and my family. So I thought about it for a little while, and then I wanted to tell my side of the story. Absolutely. And so that's why I decided to do it. And How far back does the book go? The book goes back to 1985. Hmm. Well, no. You, you were know, a baby then. No, actually, that's when I married my ex That's when I met my ex-husband. It actually goes a little further, you know, with my family members. And you right. were married okay. for 17 years. I was married for 17 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, Crazy. exactly. Uh -huh. I don't do anything for 17 years. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> 17 years. That's, that's a, long a long time. time. Did you find it somewhat therapeutic since oh, you really got into the nitty gritty absolutely. of. Yeah, I even, yeah. even I thought that if I wasn't going to come out and get published, I was satisfied enough because it literally, um, after going through therapy and speaking right. to people, nothing ever helped me but writing that book. Mm -hmm. So it was very therapeutic and um, it was the best thing I could have done. That's so interesting. Absolutely. That's yeah. the way Amazing. I felt about when I did I Married a Mobster. Like I felt like I purged my soul. Mm -hmm. Like everyone said, like, why did you do it? Why did you do it? It was like, because everyone made these assumptions based on what they saw in the newspaper right. or what they read or what they saw right, and exactly. gone in 60 but you didn't seconds. Marry a mobster, don't know. But yes, I did. No, was, for 17 that's years. That's one of you divorced from. Yeah, we were both first. on the same show. Uh, we were on yeah, ID Discovery. How did you get involved with all these people? Well, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, some of my family members were in that lifestyle. But I was a kid at the time. And, you know, I, I didn't know. These yeah, were, I'm sure you weren't really aware of what they, was they going on. They didn't sit home and discuss, you know, what they did. They didn't come home and at the dinner table and discuss what they did. So to me, they were just my family members. They were great men, you know, and uh, I looked up to them. Of course. But as I got older, I realized that that's not a lifestyle that I would want. Right. Unfortunately, I met a guy from my neighborhood who was 10 years older than me, um, who was really not in that life at the time I met him. Um, he was as, you know, he was a he not was very, very good guy. looking, too. Yeah, he was 10 mm -hmm. years Even older he, than he me. Turned you know, out to be whatever. He was a very good looking guy. He was very charming, yeah. debonair, you know, suave. And I was 19 when I met him, and he was 29. And he was. How old were you at the time? She was 19, he was 29. Yes. I did, wow. You like all the men? Um, not necessarily. Tell me something. Do you like Sylvia? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends, Vinny. <laughs> don't mind me. I'm sorry. I'm on, I'm on medication. Do you feel like, do you feel like we're in I'm their sorry. way or something? Maybe, Maybe I know. Maybe you and Love and I will go. Yeah. What was that? Love and I will go have a chat while you two chatted up right yeah. now. Oh, <laughs> no, no. No, because you, you know me. I fall in love real easy. <laughs> no, but I mean, tell me more. So anyway, 19 um, and I was 19, he was 29. He was from my neighborhood, a couple of blocks away. He so lived. he was familiar to you. Very was, familiar. Comfortable. Very comfortable, yeah. very familiar. He knew my whole family. Yeah. So, you know, when I met him... Did you know what was going on at the time? At the time, he wasn't involved in anything. I see. Um, he, was, he was a guy that hung around with certain guys, mm -hmm. but he wasn't in that life, you know, at that time. And, and I was hoping... At, was there at, at any point... Did you feel like 
hey, now I think he's involved with them, and I think he is Absolutely. involved with when them. Absolutely. When he started to hang out with John Gotti after Jr. After how long? Mm. After John um, Gotti Jr.? That was, I would okay. say, I got married in 85, so a couple of years after that <clears throat> is when I realized... Nice. Um, 85, when I was I actually that? realized that in 1986, when my son was born, um, my cousin, Frank DeChico, was blown, in, blown up in a car. Hmm. At the time... Now, who was he now? My cousin. Cousin. Tony's cousin. cousin. Hmm. And he was the underboss... Hey, I was thinking of, like, calling you up a few times. I don't want to be related to you, no. though. No. <laughs> no, listen, you know, he was the underboss for John Gotti at the time, before Sammy the Bull Gravano. And um, he got killed in Brooklyn in 1986. Hmm. And uh, around that time is when I started to realize that, you know, it was scary. You see that in the movies. Of you course, know, not in your own your life. Your family member gets blown up in a car. It's devastating. So... Um, I realized that this was kind of serious and what's going on here and what's this all about and you know that's when I realized that my husband at the time Michael was getting involved and uh, you know and you how say did you feel at that point I'm sorry that's okay how did I feel at that point? At that point, like knowing that he was getting involved, did I you didn't like, like it? it? You didn't no, like I didn't it? like it. Didn't I didn't like, like it, it at all. It. No. And I've read that you actually stood up to him. You weren't a typical mob wife. No. You actually stood your ground in a sense. Well, you know, the typical mob wife, the Italian women, the mm. older Italian women, they stood home and cooked, and you know, I mean, I did all that. You know, cooked and cleaned. And when their husbands came home, they never questioned them where they were. Right. If they were out all night, you know, they never questioned them. On the other hand, I I couldn't live like that. When he came home, did you ever say? I want this much. When he came home, yeah, with the money. Remember, like, the good well, I, I, I never had to ask for anything. To be oh, honest with oh, you, oh. that that's about one of his uh, best qualities was that he gave me everything. But I would tell him, "You're not buying me." So mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and he that was just his nature. But you know, him coming home at three, four in the morning. I wasn't just going to sit back and accept it. And it went That's on for many, where, why you, many... Who you oh, went, what were you doing? Oh, uh, you know, major wars, three in the morning. Was he telling the truth or you felt he was lying a little bit? Uh, he was lying about everything. Lying and he testified in court so that he So you thought maybe there was a chance he might have had a gumat on the side or something? Oh, more than one, yeah. More, more than one? Yeah. Yeah, ah. I had a feeling. But I never had the proof. You I never, never had never I had never had the proof. I had a feeling, mm -hmm. a gut feeling. Which like usually women's, mm -hmm. women's gut feelings are usually right. Absolutely. Yeah. But... You know, I, I held on to my marriage, and, uh, you know, I was a fighter. I wasn't, I wasn't going to give up. And there was and a I son involved. And I loved my husband, yeah. and uh, I had my son. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was a lot. You, you know, some women will walk away very easily, but not me. So I was in it for the long run, and I stood for 17 Who years. Who ended it? Amazing. I did. Mm -hmm. You did. I said. Yes. I, I ended it after I received... Is this all in the book? It's all in the book. Yeah, how um, I was trying to have another child with him for about 12 years. Oh, wow. And um, two, it was two weeks before Christmas in 2000, I received a letter stating that he had a child with another woman. Ah, oh, man. Huh. So, uh, yeah, that was fun. I would never do that. <laughs> But, you know, my book, you know, it's, it's a lot about women and what women go through in certain situations. Um, you know, he was a narcissist, and mm. a lot of men in that life are narcissists. Um, and it, I tell you what, um, what you can look for living with, at the time, I didn't know. I didn't realize, you know, um, what now was happening. Back, but yes, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the depression, the anxieties, and everything that comes with it, you know. Um, and then after that, he went to his protection program, which affected my family, mm -hmm. my son, me, um, my brother, of course, um, my mom. I mean, everybody. It's, it's, but I don't believe in ratting. Is I he don't, still around? I mean. Uh, no, he's in the witness protection program. He's in, in the witness protection witness program. Protection. And your brother's in the witness protection also. Yes. So they're both in the witness protection. Correct. Different places, I'm assuming. Uh, Obviously, I, mean, I don't know. I don't speak with them, and uh, you that's know, why I don't like going up to the country. I, <laughs> I don't believe in uh, in ratting on anyone. I was mm -hmm. brought up a certain way, and uh. I, I'm not going to change my feelings on that. Um, you know, that life is a, it's a tough life, and nothing but bad comes out of it. And I've lived it, you know. So, um, but again, I don't believe in ratting. So, but I'm sure it took a lot of Good courage girl. to actually express your feelings and in detail everything that happened. I'm sure it was in very your book. difficult. It was very difficult. It was you very know, at the courageous beginning, of you. Thank you. You know, at the beginning it was, you know, we went from I couldn't really get the words out, and then breaking down each time I would talk about it, until towards the middle, mm -hmm. uh, when I would talk and write. I had no problem discussing it. So that's where the therapy, you know, when you talk about it. And, and you want women, 
Yeah, I want to be an inspiration mm -hmm. for women. There's many women that go through many different things in their life. So much, and they never are allowed to say anything about it, and they feel like they're yeah, in a right. hole. Yeah, right. Well, they don't want it, and they feel they have to hold it yeah. in. And I held it in for a long time. And you know what? You have to let it out. You know, you know, whatever it takes to do. So, yeah. in reading my book, they'll they'll hear everything. It's raw. I can't wait to uh, read, get this book. It's very interesting. If There's I keep in touch with you, turns. Will, will there be a, a way that I could maybe find out where this book is being absolutely. sold? So absolutely. That I could, uh, maybe when I get a when copy? I publish it, absolutely, I'll give you all do the you information. Do you have a tentative date in mind, or that's still um, up in the air? I'm looking maybe towards the summer. Great. Oh, okay. So, you know. Okay. And there's also some portraits of you. Uh, Michael Bell did some yes, portraits and some paintings yes. within the book. Yes, my good friend Michael Bell, who's a great artist, um, he did actually, he did a lot of paintings for the Sopranos uh, actors. Wow. And he's an Look amazing artist. And we got together on the project and we just came up with this idea to do seven paintings of my life story in the book. Wow. And he did that. And, and they're amazing. So um, that's going to be in the book also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Love, I, I, uh, what did you do on identification discovery now? Which, uh, did you uh, do reenactments or something? No, uh, they, I did, uh, there were two shows that were docudramas. Uh, one was a biography and one was a docudrama about my life, basically. I uh, see. Because a lot of people sins. on identification and discovery do a lot of reenactments. Well, where they have some actors reenact the They, have the the actors actors yeah. Yeah. they yeah. had people reenact my story. Now, if I'm not mistaken, because sometimes, you know, like I said, I'm on medication. Now, I met you at a, at a, at a a birthday party. Love's birthday, birthday party. party. Did I meet the two of you that night? Yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> See, that's why. All right. All right. Don't worry. He's getting I'll call everything you straightened out right Tony, now. Tony, I'll call you again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so I did. I, all right. Yes, that was right. Love's birthday party. Yeah. Oh, that was, oh, Something nice. that's very interesting. Angelina Jolie, her character in Gone in 60 Seconds was based loosely on your past mm -hmm. and your former life. Mm -hmm. Allegedly, How? yeah. Allegedly. So it's not... So, did, you didn't have any input in that at all? Um, it was just based on story the, news? The, the story is allegedly, well, you know what, the story was in, actually an old story that was, it, it was an ex existing story, but they, okay. they mod, like updated it, modernized it by taking someone's story and you know, adding it to this old tale, like, I you know, see. so they needed a new criminal and a new mm -hmm. story to tell it about. So they chose someone who what, happened to be one of my lucky six ex fiancés. Ex -fiancés. And uh, gotcha. so the the story wound up becoming a pseudo biography. You know, it added his story wow. to it. So um, they kind of told that tale that way. And, and I, I get a lot of, like Tony was saying, you know, people get this, uh, they get this idea right. about you and about your lifestyle, and they, they like paint you as a villain right away, and they think of you in a bad way and whatever. Yeah. I really, I could care less what anybody thinks about me. Like, you don't, don't you know, walk, walk in my shoes, mm -hmm. live my life, then tell me. Mm -hmm. If you don't kill yourself after like 24 after hours, you, good luck. Right. Tell me how you do it, you know, exactly. how, you, how you handle it. I went I through a Well, it's pretty I remarkable. I would be walking around very long. <laughs> My, my life story is the story of a survivor, period. Point there blank. you go. That's yeah. it. I've survived things that people can't even dream about, you know, living. And they think that it's so exciting, you know, oh, Angelina Jolie, and yeah. it's so glamorous. And it's not. There's right. a lot of a lot of heartbreak and a lot of pain and a lot of misery and a lot of uh, a lot of running and hiding. And, you know, I ran, left the country. I mean, like... It just, yeah. I mean, you things. get 24 hours to leave the country, and you have to be gone for three years. Cousins. You know, so. Um, so second cousin, second cousin, and my cousin. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a lot of cousins. And uncles, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did. And, and uncles. <laughs> I had, wow. yeah, I had a lot. <laughs> well, sorry, I was going to say, well, that's why it's so remarkable to see each of you, you writing a book, and then you have a new co cosmetic line. Like, each of you oh, doing so Oh, my cosmetic so many... line I've had for a while. I'm working on a new TV show. Oh, you are? But it's, I mean, after everything that both of you have gone through, to see such power in women is really inspiring. And I hope that our viewers see it that way. Instead well, of judging that they see inspiration. Well, exactly. You know, listen, we live in a very opinionated world. Yeah, Let's of course. face it. So, right. you know, and, and again, everyone's stereotyped when you're involved with the mob, so-called uh, members, husbands, again, wa um, ha husbands, fathers. Um, but the reality is not every one of us that is involved with someone like that is that typical mob mm -hmm. wife. So that's what we try to let people Emulate. understand. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, they wanted me on mob wives, the show mob wives. I, I didn't go on. The reason why they wanted me on was because 
Carla Fasciola, who was on there, was my ex-husband's mistress for many years while I was married to him. You're kidding. Yes. Oh, my God. Wow. So they wanted me on basically they to wanted go, to go get after And I thought about it for, yeah. for a minute, but then I realized that if I go on there, that's not what I was looking to do to portray myself like that in that light. Nothing against you. Um, <laughs> I love love. Um, but that's not what I, I was looking I don't mind being the bad guy. You don't like it, you got a remote. It came with your TV. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Right, but right. That, you don't like me, you don't got to look at me. Exactly. No. <laughs> absolutely. But I was trying to do it differently, and that's why when ID Discovery contacted me, to me that was perfect, because mm -hmm. it was me alone telling my story, no interruptions, no fist fighting, you know, anything like that. And I got my point across. So you were satisfied with the portrayal of your story? Oh, absolutely. Anna. Kevin Kaufman, the producer, was amazing. Am I right? I mean, even on her, mm -hmm. you know, her series, it was great. He he's a gentleman, and uh, he portrayed us perfectly. So it, it it came out really great. So I'm proud of that. Yeah, he yeah. was wonderful to work. Exactly. Exactly. Can we talk about what show you're working on now? I'm working with actually Kevin Kaufman again. Oh, same. you are. He's directing my new show. So I can't really say too much about it. it. I'm not yeah. about the network and all that kind of stuff yet. But um, basically, it's more of me. You get to see more about me mm -hmm. and the real me. Not, uh, not um, staged, not you know, set up, not, you know, uh, yeah. orchestrated. Hiring how to beat somebody you know. up and yeah. then firing yeah. how. It's not orchestrated you know, and it's so. not that. It's more about, like, you know, really more about my life. My mom's going to be in it. My mom oh, wow. spends a lot more time. With you. My mother appeared a couple of episodes of Mob Wives and everyone loved it. The viewers went crazy for her. Mm -hmm. So um, it's exciting. It's fun. It's going to be It's going to be a lot more fun. You know? Tell me something about Tony. Now, me calling you up all the time. Hey, I'm not going to get in any trouble calling you up, am I? No. <laughs> oh. There's nobody around anymore. Oh, 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 oh good. They're either right. dead hey, or in jail know. or yeah. somewhere else. Witness the protection the program. Oh, the cops yeah. come to my house and say, what are you doing with this girl? No. You know, oh, no. Right, oh. no, not at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I I do all these things, and that your cousins and uncles and brothers. I do these all in movies, right. and I'm getting paid for it. I'm getting a pat on the back. Well, and I grew up in Little Italy, and I used to see the guys on that side of the street. They were all doing wrong, you know, doing bad things and wrong or whatever, and they were going to jail. And I, you know, I'd done 90 days for something stupid, you know, robbing a patrol car, but that was nothing, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, well, you know, some people born and raised in that life, like mm -hmm. you know, with me, I, I it was embedded in my mind that you know you don't rat on your friends, you don't rat on your friends in exactly. school from a little girl, you don't mm -hmm. rat on your friends, right. and uh, you're brainwashed, and so then all of a sudden you have a husband or a brother, whoever it may be. Um, no, sure, there's states, no nobility, there's no dignity. Right. You just can't switch your feelings off. And they do it because they're selfish and they have their, their selfish exactly. reasons why they do it. And they don't care who they leave behind. Or who they hurt. Well, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, the family members of the, the men that they're ratting on. You know, this is how I feel. If you're involved in that life and that's all you knew your whole life and you know what you're getting into, you know, and now you obviously do something wrong and get caught, go do your time like a man mm -hmm. because you knew that this was going to happen eventually. So, you know... That's my feeling on that, you know, because when you don't, you take down everyone, not just the, the other fella that you're friends with that you're ratting on, you t his family members, his children, your family, your wife, your children, your mother, your father, and then you go off and you go off into the witness protection pro program somewhere in Idaho, and are you really happy? Arizona. Are you really happy? I, I can't imagine, you know, leaving and not being leaving able. Everything. Exactly. Everything. Exactly. And my ex-husband did that with the girl that he had the kid with, and she went, she went with him and left her family, and they went with the kid and left my son behind. So. Oh my God. You know, and the um, best thing that ever happened to his son. He needs that. He no. That. Exactly. You know, How old is your boy, Tony? My, he's 27. 27. Wow. And you look like a baby, and he's 27. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going to call you more often. <laughs> Come on, John, but it's 27. Wow. <laughs> now, leave me alone. Uh, I already got a stalker. No. But we won't get into that one. 27. And I got, yeah, I got one. Yeah, my boy's going to be 24 next week. 24. But, you know, the whole lifestyle, it, it's hard. It's hard on a lot of people. It when is. you stop and think about the decision that you're going to make by doing that, you really... You know, to me, it's desperate people doing desperate things. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line, because I know you have to regret it sometime in your life to leave your family members behind and, and 
you know, living with the stigmatism of right. my son having to know his father is what he is, is difficult. Very so once difficult. he left, you never were in contact with him again? No. Ever? No. Wow. no, that, no. How long has that been? Um, it's been since 2004. Okay. When he, yeah. But I did have to go to court and uh, testify, testify against him, and my son also had to go to court oh, and testify against so his own rough, father. Right. So. Uh, it's How did you, you not go to that? Do you sleep? I would have freaked out. They would have had, to, they would have had to bring me in like Hannibal Lecter. Would have had to you don't, you don't sleep good at age And it wasn't after two years. No. It was 17 years of marriage. So this exactly. is, I mean, a huge exactly. chunk of your life. Listen, that, you know, the right. majority of men, not only in that life, cheat, you know, and, you know, maybe you could deal with that, but having a child with another woman, uh, 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 it's beyond, it's, it's, you know, it's heartbreaking, but, um, no, I don't sleep at night. That's the same. You know, you know what I do when I can't sleep? I have a cough medicine with codeine. I take a shot of that and yeah. smoke a joint. <laughs> Oh my God. I say something wrong. I don't know. I say it's something wrong. Where did you bring that? Yeah. Where did you bring that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, anyway, you know what? We don't. We only have just another moment to go, and uh, so before the show ends, I love. I want to tell you, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. So much. And it was a Tony Marie. I'll call you when I have to. Okay. All right? And uh, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you for having us. I'm sorry? Thank you for having us. Oh, please. And uh, this show is all over, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Okay. And um, you guys did a terrific job. I didn't think it was going to be this good. Well, they can follow us. It, it's yes. more oh, thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> and you obviously never saw any of my shows if you didn't think it was Exactly, because <laughs> love is very interesting. <laughs> very charismatic. Well. But you could follow us on Twitter. On Twitter, at Love Majeski. On uh, Twitter and Vine, all Vine, Instagram. I'm still everything I have, my computers. first and last name. Just exactly Same thing the way with me, Tony Ricci, Twitter, I'm, I'm Instagram. I'm under the rock with computers. Yeah, I'm sure our viewers will be very interested in when your book finally is released yeah, and absolutely. on your new show. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. But I will uh, somehow, Contact. will be that you mentioned Twitter, I will have somebody get on it and, and help me out with it. Because, yeah, because yeah. all I know how to do is answer my emails and... Mm -hmm. Send a message back and go on Facebook. And you know what that means to me? The show is over. It's over. Love Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you cold, Tommy? I'm love. sorry, baby. That's I love. love. <laughs> <laughs>